Hello again, class. This is Demetrius Wilson with Organizational Behavior. We're on to Chapter 7, where we're speaking about managing stress and emotions. And we all need to, whether it be in work or in our family and home life. Learning Objectives. Understand the stress cycle. Recognize the sources of stress for employees. Recognize the outcomes of stress. Understand how to manage stress in organizational contexts. Understand the roles emotions play in attitudes and behaviors at work. Learn about emotional labor and how to manage it. And understand how emotions can affect perceptions of what is ethical. And last but not least, understand cross-cultural differences in stressors. Getting emotional at American Express. So as the American Express case illustrates, selling life insurance can be both emotional and stressful job. And you can imagine that, right? It can be emotional for the individuals purchasing the insurance, and it can also be emotional for the individual selling the insurance. The stress process. So how exactly does stress work? How does it initiate? How does it end? How does it you know, mediate between the middle? In, in Saley's General Adaptation Syndrome, or GAS, I know that's funny, model, stress affects an individual in three steps. Alarm, oh, we're alarmed, like alarm goes off in the morning. Resistance, uh, we're fighting against it. And exhaustion, we can't fight anymore. Stress is the body's reaction to a change that requires a physical, mental, or emotional adjustment or response. According to Gallup's findings, 80% of Americans feel workplace stress at least some of the time. I know I definitely do. The stress process. So here it is written out. Alarm. When outside stressor jolts the individual insisting that something must be done. Right? So it's stressor. Something has to happen. Something has to occur. Resistance. When the body begins to release cortisol and draws on fats and sugar to find a way to adjust to the demands of stress, right? So your body's like, hey, here comes this stress. How do I adjust to it? And then finally, exhaustion. When the body has depleted its stores of sugars and fats and prolonged release of cortisol has caused the stressor to significantly weaken the individual. Now, with that being said, don't say I'm going to go stock up on sugars and fats and I won't be stressed anymore. That's not exactly how this works. Workplace stressors. And we all have them. I definitely have them on a daily basis. When I go to work today, I'm sure there will be levels of stress that I will have to manage and deal with. So role demands. Role ambiguity. Vagueness in relation to job responsibilities. If you're at a job and you're not exactly sure what you should be doing, then yeah, you're going to be stressed. Role conflict. Facing contradictory demands at work. Like sometimes individuals have more than one manager or more than one person telling them what to do. And if what those individuals are telling them to do contradicts, then you're going to have a conflict between your role and that creates stress. Role overload. Having insufficient time and resources to complete one's job. If you don't have the time and resources, I say, you know what? You're going to have to complete this between 8 o'clock and 5 o'clock. No overtime. You just got to get done. It, it, it's role overload, and people can uh, burn out from that, and they can be very, very stressed. So continuing with workplace stressors, information overload. The information processing demands on an individual's time to perform interactions and internal calculations exceed the supply or capacity of time available for such processing. I need to get this done, A, B, C. I only have time to do A and B. Top 10 stressful jobs, just so you guys know. Uh, and if you see what number one is, uh, number one is inner city high school teacher. Right, That ranks even above police officer, which is number two. Number three is a minor. I can understand that. Air traffic controller. Yes, I've always heard that that's very stressful. Number five is medical intern. Six is stockbroker. Seven journalists. Eight, customer service slash complaint worker. Definitely know about that. I run a number of customer service units, and at one of the companies, they had serious longevity 
for customer service reps. People that have been here 20 something years working in customer service and I don't even see how it was possible in the type of environment that they were in. Uh, secretary and waiter. Those are the top 10 stressful jobs. Work family conflict. And this is where stress really comes in because not only is it affecting your work, but then it's also affecting your family. And it could be stress from work that's affecting your family or stress from your family that's affecting work. So when the demands from work and family are negatively affecting one another, and it's negatively that we're looking at. If they positively affect one another, then it's great. George Lucas found making the Empire Strikes Back, great movie, uh, stressful both personally and financially. Those who worked with him described him as being fully engrossed in the process, which led to, among other things, work-family conflict. So back to your organizational behavior toolbox, how stressed are you, where the Holmes Rage Scale shows the events and how they're ranked in terms of stress. Now, we all handle stress differently, so... This is not something that's the end all be all that says this is exactly how everybody handles stress. But it's good to see these things because you see how uh, they could affect you should something occur. So 100 points. Top one is death of a spouse. Definitely understand that. Divorce, second, 73. Separation, not too far behind divorce, 65. Jail term, 63. Uh, death of a close family member, 63. Personal injury or illness, 53. Marriage, 50. <laughs> so marriage is, is pretty high up there, even though uh, you know, you're know you supposed to look at that as a positive thing. Uh, fired or laid off at work, 47. So, hey, you can, you can handle uh, being fired off or laid off at work uh, better than you can handle the stressors of marriage. That's what they're saying. Marital reconciliation, 45. Retirement, 45. Pregnancy, 40. Change of financial state. And so on and so forth. You can read through all of those. And they actually, uh, it's a pretty good scale that they have. So outcomes of stress. You can have physiological outcomes and you can have psychological outcomes. So physiological, you have nervousness, right? You see the people shaking their leg, twitching. Uh, tension, headaches, anger, irritability easily uh, it will easily snap and fatigue just very tired psychological depression go to a deep depression go into the room just sit there quietly and think to yourself about your stresses and uh, possibly cry and anxiety that's another uh, psychological uh, result or outcome of stress so work outcomes right? you have to figure out how like they say a work-life balance you have to figure out a way to kind of balance off everything that you do. Individuals who are able to find the right balance of not too much work challenge, which spills into exhaustion, and not too little work challenge, which can signal that signal apathy C increases in performance, right? So if you're right in the middle, you're good. But if you're working too much, then you're going to have stressors. And if you're working too little, you may have stressors too because maybe uh, you just don't know what you're doing or maybe uh, you don't have enough work to do, but you need to find out a way to be right there in the middle. Individual differences in experience stress. So you have different types, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, a type A person and a type B person. A type A has high level of speed and patience, job involvement, and hard driving. Type B, they tend to be calm and think through situations as opposed to reacting emotionally. And I feel like I have traits and qualities in both type A and type B, and I'm sure you do as well. Discussion questions, remember, look through those, ask them to your friends, family, uh, classmates, and get answers and feedback uh, back and forth so you can discuss it. So individual approaches, approaches to managing stress, you have the corporate athlete, I'll let you guys look in your book about that, and I'll also mention in another lecture, that's a great term coined by this book, uh, you have flow, talking about your diet and how you eat and how it helps, exercise and sleep, how those two help with manage your stress, creating a social network, and time management. Time management is crucial, you have to know how to manage your time in today's workplace, and even with your family and friends, you have to know how to manage your time. So flow. High focus, 20% of managers are disengaged in work. 
all managers should be engaged in work and 20% is, is a high percentage and 10% of managers are engaged in purposeful work right so they feel like the work that they're doing has a good very good purpose to it low focus 30% of managers are procrastinators I procrastinate from time to time and 40% of managers are distracted at work which is you know that kind of comes with the territory you're going to be distracted but it depends on what you're saying they're distracted by are they distracted by things at home or are they just distracted by the fact that they have a lot of employees and they ask them a lot of questions uh, a key to flow is engaging at work so the more you engage the higher your flow will be uh, yet research shows that most managers do not feel engaged in pur purposeful work Designing work that flows. So you have challenge, right? So you want work that's challenging. You want meaningfulness. You also want work that means something that people can look at and say, like, hey, this is what I do, and it, and it means something to the company. You want to have choice, uh, choice and selection for the employees, but not necessarily too many choices because you want to still be able to dictate that. And uh, competence. Are you an individual who can actually do the work? Diet. I definitely had to change and have had to change my diet over the course of the last few years, you know, due to stress, due to, you know, how much I'm working, things of that nature. And it's, it's a lifestyle change, but it's, it's definitely good for you. I will, I will admit that. So eating healthy foods such as fresh fruits and vegetables is a key to stress management. I've now conformed to having a Nutribullet every morning and I can definitely see the positive effects. Time management. Time management is defined as development of tools or techniques that help us to be more productive when we work. There are online utilities that help us accomplish this. This is an example of output from Rescue Timer user, and there's the website, which is free to use, right? So if you have some time management problems, go ahead and punch those numbers in there and get what may be a solution. Organizational approaches to managing stress make expectations clear this will help everybody's stress level you need to say this is what I want you to do and it needs to be clear don't be uh, you know ambiguous with your employees and say you know this is what I want you to do but nobody understands like you're Confucius nobody understands what you're saying you need to be clear and if you don't think you're clear ask them was that clear if it wasn't clear then I'll go back and clarify it for you give employees autonomy right We've been speaking about that and empowerment, give them the ability to make some decisions. Uh, create a fair work environment, right? That's always uh, leads to less stress. Uh, there will be a lot less drama. Telecommuting. I have individuals that work for me, quite a few, that telecommute. And when you say telecommute, that means that they work from home. And this does alleviate a lot of stress. They don't have to drive into the workplace. Uh, they don't have to, well, you know, I heard this from one person. They don't have to, you know, shower first thing in the morning. Right. And hopefully they're showering during the day. Uh, a lot of different things. They're just in their element and things are quiet and they get their work done and life is good for them. So I would say I'm a big supporter of telecommuting. Uh, employee sabbatical. Some companies allow employees to take a sabbatical and just say, hey, I'm going to take this time off. It's paid and then I'm going to come back. And employee assistance programs or EAPs, things that you can call and, and, and talk to individuals about assisting you with your problems and or concerns. Organizational approaches to managing stress. So they used to look like uh, the freeway when I was uh, on my way to work because uh, I would have to go all the way to Irvine. But, uh, but now I just take the streets and I'm very happy about that. Uh, telecommuting helps employees avoid traffic jams like this one. And that's definitely 100% true. So discussion, uh, answer those two questions, ask those two questions. They really are good questions to discuss. I'll say that all throughout the semester. So emotions, so the green check mark means good, X, red X means bad. So desired event, positive emotions, you have joy, love, and surprise. Hey, yay, I got it done, high five, let's hug, let's have a great time. Uh, undesired event, negative emotions, anger, fear, and sadness, right? I'm mad, I want to punch something, fear, I'm, I'm fearful that I may lose my job, and sadness, I'm just sad about the whole situation. I'm going to sit in the corner and in the dark and eat cookies. So emotional contagion, you'll see how this uh, is a vicious circle, and when you say like, oh, that's a vicious circle, vicious cycle, that means it continues to go. So a customer argues with you, and you argue back, which you shouldn't do. 
customer leaves in a huff, frustration carries to the next customer, right? So especially in customer service, I've seen this time and time again, have this big blow up with somebody, you get off the line, and then the next call, you're very short with them. You have to leave that call where that call ended. Again, to your organizational toolbox, you want to practice changing your emotions. So, and I actually tried this. I've never seen that. Yeah, you know, I've never put it into play like this. But you want to follow these instructions. So put this in your organizational behavior toolbox for sure. Close your eyes. Everybody, I want you to do it with me. Close your eyes. Breathe in slowly. Release your breath. Now open your eyes and give me a big smile, right? Especially in customer service when you have a, tr a tough call, this is a great thing to do, great exercise. Discussion, you wanna uh, answer some of these good questions on how easy do you think it's to manage one's emotions and what different types of emotions are most socially accepted. Answer those questions, They are. I'm telling you, these are the keys to have you to start thinking in the way that the experts think, the experts on organizational behavior they think about things and it will help you uh, drastically in your workplace. Emotions affect attitudes and behaviors at work. So you have fear, joy, surprise, love, sadness, and anger, which we all touched upon already. So you have effective events theory, that's AET, explores how events on the job can cause different kinds of people to feel different emotions, right? Like I said, uh, if I feel the stress of having to complete a project, I'm going to get a lot of energy and say okay I'm going after it I'm gonna tackle it other people may say oh no this is not a good thing and just go uh, to the stall and cry and take a nap and and not really want to uh, to address it but they may be able to come back and and do a better job than I did it's just their attitude and their mindset so emotional labor surface acting and this is really interesting displaying physical signs such as smiles that reflects emotions without actually feeling the emotion so you see somebody you don't really want to smile but you smile like hey you know half fake smile you can do that it's called surface acting deep acting is actually pretending to experience a promotion right? or emotion I'm sorry uh, like for instance uh, you know somebody says oh uh, if anybody watches Big Brother they say oh you want to see my Big Brother house and they say oh yeah and like, I don't want to see your house uh, you know I, I lost this week and I'm going to go home so pretending to experience emotions and then genuine acting displaying emotions that are aligned with the emotions that are actually felt right so you actually feel a certain way and you display those emotions more true uh, than uh, than deep acting. So if you look at the emotional labor chart, uh, you see when it comes to acting, the closer to the middle of the circle that you are, the less emotional labor your job demands. The further away, the more emotional labor the job demands. And when I say emotional labor, uh, you have to act and show your emotions this way and that way and, and be positive instead of being negative. So right there in the middle, you see employee personality. This is your personality, whatever it may be. Genuine acting is right on the outside, right? So genuine acting is on the outside because, hey, this is how I actually feel, and I'm genuinely going to act that way. Deep acting is right after that because now you're going to have to do some acting so that those individuals believe that those emotions are there. And then all the way on the outside, you have surface acting, which is just smiling and saying, eh, you know, throw a grin at them. You know, I don't like seeing you, but hey, I'll just give you a quick smile. Emotional intelligence, you have four steps. Uh, they build upon each other. So at the very uh, bottom, you have self-awareness, right? We know exactly what's going on. You're closer to a state of flow. You have self-management, right? You want to manage yourself. If you can manage yourself, that's less management that your manager will have to do. Social awareness, you're aware of uh, your social responsibilities and things going on in that, in that environment. And relationship management, uh, managing those relations that you have with your employees, your manager, and everyone else within the workplace. So discussions, go through your three discussion questions and, and come up with some good answers to those. Emotions and ethics. So let's look at Joshua Green's experiments. Scenario one, a trolley is racing down a track, about to kill five people. You have the ability to steer the trolley onto another track where it will only kill one person. Most people felt this was okay, the lesser of two evils. On the other scenario, it says the trolley is racing down a track, about to kill five people. You can push a large man onto the track, 
which will save the other five. Most felt the sacrifice was emotionally wrong. Well, is there a big difference between one and two? You may argue and say, no, it's not. It's the exact same thing. But the difference could be that you have to get so involved by uh, push pushing a large man uh, onto the track. So when you're involved and you have to do something like that, then, then people are more apprehensive. But if it's just making a decision to say, either take this many lives or this many lives, I can do that. So lack of leisure time and stress around the globe. 40% of Americans do not plan to take a vacation within the next year. I'm definitely taking a vacation. And I'll tell you right now, everyone needs to take a vacation. You come back feeling so refreshed and invigorated. Americans have 16.5 hours of leisure time per week after their work and household obligations are filled. <clears throat> Some Japanese employees work an average of 236 more hours per year than, Amer than their American counterparts and 500 more em employees in France and Germany. So they're over there working hard. And many Europeans take the month of August off. Don't be jealous. Right? Don't be Jay. Uh, but yeah, they have the month of August off. I would love that, but it just is not a possibility here in the United States in most positions, in most professions and in most positions. So lastly, uh, your discussion questions such as explain the time when you have seen emotions help someone to be more ethical than they might have otherwise been. And, and, and answer those few questions and statements. They're, they're very good to kind of open up your mind to the information that I've attempted to instill upon you. As always, have a good day and a great week. I will see you on the next chapter.